So this is the second ever Magnus Rambling Rants video. The first one did so exceptionally well. Um, one person watched it, and that was me. So it's obviously on a trend. Um, you know, it's funny because every time I try to branch away from nuclear warfare and nuclear war simulation, because I feel like maybe I'm doing too much and people want to see other stuff, never does particularly well in the nuclear war stuff. Always does particularly well. It's the stuff that interests me the most, to be honest with you, too. But these videos are very easy to do. I just sit here, and it's kind of like a vlog. So I don't mind making them. And if not a lot of people watch them, big deal. Um, and if they do, hey, you're getting firsthand time, you know, with the champ. So you might as well tune in. Uh, you know, other channels are bigger, better production values. But ain't nobody, nobody cooler than I am I'm the coolest mf -er out there so um on a sort more serious note yeah you know one of the topics reoccurring thing is the training and stuff that my wife and I are doing and you know I made a promise I wouldn't bring up the fact that I've done 16 more sets than her this week so I'm not going to talk about that anymore um but we did uh back and chest training today. So supersetted that together, trying to get in some more supersets cause trying to do a weight cut. And you know, one of the things increasing the volume and increasing the training frequency and doing a lot of supersets and triceps and giant sets, really just calories burned in training. Um, I'm a big believer in the old school style training that, you know, you spend Periodization, certain phases. So you go through a strength phase, and then you go through a uh, just a generalized phase, and then you kind of go into the, what you call quality training. That's where you start getting into the six days a week stuff. You start supersetting stuff, training, bot, comparing body parts, and you know even double split routines where you do it twice a day. And don't do a lot of that anymore because tend to get run down pretty quick but do train with a higher volume so like today we did 32 sets total now it's split between back and chest and everything and trying to work back into that like 40 set range per training session and so we did um i'm dealing with that issue talked about in my last video with the uh um in in infra super supinatitis muscle um long story short i'm trying to avoid dumbbell pressing movements right now so really started with um smith machine inclines supersetted that with um medium uh, under medium grip uh, pull downs then we did decline smith machine presses and supersetted that with close grip, close underhand grip pull downs. And then trying to really train the upper back and the rhomboids in that muscle. So did some, um, after that, did some uh, flat dumbbell flies. Really focused on getting a nice good stretch. And then paired that on the uh, pec deck chest fly machine, but with the reverse flies for the rear delts and upper back. And then the final thing was uh, cable crossovers, bringing them low, trying to hit those low pecs, and doing that with the bent over barbell rows on the Smith machine. So I use a lot of Smith machine today. Um, and it's just you know mixing up in a variety and everything. Um, so I'm a big believer in barbells. I mean, I only started using a Smith machine probably in the last year or so but i find for when you're doing more bodybuilding versus powerlifting i do feel that it's a great thing to throw in there usually i'll do a dumbbell press or a barbell press for the first movement and then move in but again you know what normally would have done started with some incline dumbbell presses because of that issue avoided that so did it on the smith machine instead so never an advocate i, th I think unless you have something you know to make sure you are hitting your free weights as a base um but don't be afraid of machines either so you can build you know they, everything has a 
place in it, whether it's cable or machines. And so, you know, we did that and, uh, you know, four sets. And so it was, I think, 32 total and everything. It was good training. So built up a good sweat, even though, you know, we have a, uh, it's, you know, it's on our first floor, so it's AC'd and everything. Um, for a long time, our gym was in our garage and it wasn't. So it was colder and crap in the winter and hotter than crap in the summer <laughs> and stuff. But the garage was really well insulated, so it was never too bad. And even the humidity levels and stuff wouldn't be as bad as outside. But it was definitely, definitely sweat inducing. Um, but it's a good time. So my wife, her, she was she had some soreness in her back, so I actually advised her to not. And I would just do my back and we do chest tomorrow, but. She wanted to jump in anyway, so uh, trying to make sure, you know, longevity and staying injury-free is the most important thing because we're not out to compete or anything. Um, so that's number one. Um, so aside from that, I was looking, and I want to say that Gosh, what was the headline? I wish I could remember what it was. It was something to the effect of um, the Russian tactical nuclear drills that are going on near Belarus. That there was a phase two part of it, and that's something that they hadn't pre-communicated about it. i got to read a little bit more about it. Obviously, the information is going to be hit or miss You know, when it comes to geopolitical and defense related stuff you gotta be very careful there's so many sensational headlines there's a lot of nothings but people got to make articles about stuff just like you know, have to make videos about stuff so you gotta sometimes sift through okay what's real and what's bs what's normal operating behavior um now these tactical drills aren't necessarily normal operating behavior but when you're in a long-standing conflict like this and there are people supplying your enemy, and those are nuclear-armed nations. Well, things like this take place. You know, is it posturing or whatever? You know, yeah, I mean, there could be a level of posturing, saber-rattling, nuclear brinkmanship, but you also have to take some of it serious. They may well be preparing for the fact that if NATO has direct involvement, that they're going to utilize these weapons. I've said time and time again, you can't just dismiss what these people say because you think they're authoritarian regimes regimes that just spout off saber rattling all the time that's what happened that's why you know ukraine got invaded when you know 90 percent of people in the united states didn't pay much attention to it they say oh russia's always threatening you know this stuff and i was telling them i was like this isn't just a threat so prior to that i said this is real this is going to happen they're going to invade this time this isn't just saber rattling um because the actions were different but you also have to look at what they've been saying leading up to that point. And it's also very easy to dismiss it and say, well, the discrimination and the threat to the Russian-speaking people in eastern Ukraine is not valid. It's just propaganda by Russia. Well, I know from at least some people there, some of the Russian-speaking people there, that they feel it was very valid and still feel very valid. So... It's easy to dismiss these things. It's important you take a look at it and take what they say sometimes at face value, or at least entertain the possibility at face value that what they're saying is serious. And I, I think that's one of the biggest things that, you know, and I, I don't necessarily think that maybe people, you know, Pentagon and natural defense um, necessarily they don't take it serious, but I think when I say a lot of comments from people, layman people, they don't take it very serious sometimes. Um, you even see some of the comments on my videos sometimes, you know, the, the, what I consider people to be, I don't know, say grossly misinformed, but people that see a headline or an article or something and take it completely at face value. I know that takes away what I just said, but again, you've got to look at all sources. You've got to sift through those sources, look at past behaviors, analyze that stuff, and make you know, judgment call based on that, what you're going to believe. Um, so, you know, there was that. There's um, there's some other interesting stuff, and I, I got a separate video I'm going to make about it. 
Oh my god, every time I start recording a video lately, this cat starts doing this. It's nuts. That's, it's either when I'm trying to record a video, sleeping in the middle of the night, or when we're training in the gym too. Sometimes she'll be upstairs and the other cats will come downstairs generally and hang out with us. But this one will uh, make these sounds and let me tell you something. It's annoying. <laughs> There's times when, you know, working from home and stuff, I'll be on a... Uh, um, a WebEx or Zoom call or whatever, an executive meeting. <laughs> and eventually I have to be like, I apologize if it sounds like there's a cat in heat in my background. Um, it's not, but you probably are hearing it and stuff. And it's always a pleasant experience. Um, I'm going to keep this video fairly short. The last video was like 30 minutes or whatever. And again, you know, so far, you know, it's not gotten a large audience, but... Just chance for me to sit in the camera and talk and say some stuff. And, you know, and if only a few people watch and if they find it entertaining, that's great. And if they don't, well, hey, you know, I am uh, I like to talk anyways. So if I didn't, why would I have a YouTube channel? So replenishing my fluids as always. I think I might have a little scotch tonight. Nothing too fancy, just some Johnny Walker, but um, a little scotch, and I think we're going to have some uh, uh, Euros. Um, so, um, that'll be good. Nice protein, some good carbohydrates and everything. I'm trying to, well, aside from having some beers every so often. Trying to clean up the diet too, alongside with the weight cut. Just kind of do it in phases. So I, I've dropped the, I'll drop the beer out. You know, it's, everything goes in phases. So okay, start to kick up the training a little bit. Start to reduce. Okay, so start cutting out desserts or, man, you know, cutting out, uh, you know, pizza or something, and slowly phase in one thing and then the other. And then, okay, so you cut down. So. Maybe only have a beer on a Friday night or a Saturday night or whatever. Um, and do it in phases and work your way down, just like you work your way down, reducing calories every two weeks. And so I usually try to plan, if I do a weight cut, like a 24-week thing and start a certain amount and go there, 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 and uh, go off of that. And so... Um, Anyways, there's some yeah reasoning behind it because I've got some stuff coming up that, uh, hey, I want to just improve my conditioning overall and everything. And got some things on the horizon that uh, i talk about later. So, anyways, hope everybody has a great weekend. Enjoy. Um, be on the lookout for some actual real videos coming out. Uh, should be one posted up. Probably uh, Monday or Tuesday, and um, the next one in the uh, Nuclear War series, and then um, the long-awaited hobby one, and I still have the one to post about um, Magnus, the actual cat, um, and the story of us uh, rescuing him. So if you check out my shorts, look, there's one I just posted, because yesterday Magnus was sleeping, his mouth was a little agape, kind of like me when I sleep. And uh, started laughing and woke him up, and he shot me a death glare. His mouth still stayed agape, though. That was the funny part. <laughs> and so check it out. It's a short. It's only like 45 seconds long, but I think it's pretty funny. So enjoy, everybody. Have a great weekend.